Hey everybody, it's Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. For all things Vespa, check us out on the web, ScooterWest.com. We definitely have the parts to fix your scooter. We ha have enough parts to put this motor back together. But today, if you followed all the episodes, we got this motor pretty much ready to install into the frame. And this episode, we're gonna have the motor running. But wait a moment. There's a little bit more to your air filter than you think. Um, you can neglect air filter. It's pretty important that the motor uh, breathes clean air. Maybe you have a problem where you have oil all over the back of your belt, belt cover. I'm going to show you all the seals and gaskets that are part of the air filter system along with the breather hose. They're all items that are made of rubber and deteriorate over time. This scooter's pretty much 10 years old and these parts are probably kind of getting close to the end of their service life. So a very important message for you, do not drink and drive. Definitely don't drink and ride a scooter. Probably not a good idea. I probably did it a few too many times in my young days and I'm still with us. But I don't know, I kind of know this from the back of my head working on these scooters, so I'm gonna enjoy a nice beverage while I work on the scooter here. So kidding aside from drinking and working on a scooter, you do need to concentrate. It's totally unacceptable. If my techs were drinking and working on scooters, they'd be out of my shop. But I don't know, you wanna enjoy life, enjoy it at the fullest. Uh, for the next couple of weeks, if you, or even maybe a month or so, we have enough beer cozies at our Scooter West web store. If you spend over 500 bucks, you can get a free beer, beer cozy with the robot logo, 100,000 subscribers. Thanks everybody. Let's get right to it. So we got the air filter box. We took that out, um, I think on video one. There's three screws that hold it to the engine. Took those all out. I like using a power screwdriver to remove them. I do not like the power screwdriver to reinstall these screws. They got these thumb screws that you normally use if this air box was in the, um, the frame. You know, makes it a lot easier because you can reach up there, you can't get access with a screwdriver. But since the motor's out, you do a little more work to pull the motor out um, on a major, I wouldn't call it overhaul, but a major, major service with some other critical repairs such as replacing studs and overhauling the water pump. It just makes the job so much easier. You're not fighting everything because the scooter frame's in the way. Um, just like a Porsche mechanic, you wanna change the fan belts on an old 911 Porsche, you're gonna be pulling that motor out. It's a lot easier from what I understand. I'm not a Porsche mechanic by any means. So I got the belt cover off. There's still a couple screws in there. Um, pull the filter out. It's a little dirty. It's definitely dry. This is not too bad. We're gonna go ahead and wipe the inside of the belt cover off or the, the air filter cover off because there's quite a bit. I just dumped the rest of the screws out. But there's a critical gasket that's always overlooked on these uh, air boxes. People wonder why they have oil leaking from, you know, the air box and they wonder where is that oil leak coming from? There's two places it comes from. It's this gasket that's in this seam right here. You sometimes use a knife and pull it out. Um, Piaggio actually recommends replacing this gasket every time you take the air box apart. Um, we have those readily available, very inexpensive, 831-995 for the GTS uh, gasket. Another spot they leak is these air bubbles. These are collection, oil collection bubbles. Uh, we have those available. 827-831 is the rubber bubble that you could replace. And then there's the clamp, CM002910 for the replacement clamp. Uh, these pair are still in pretty good shape. They're nice and tight. Uh, you can pull those off if there is excess amount of oil in there. Very clean. This scooter probably wasn't ridden too hard. If you're riding on the freeway a lot or in humid environments, you'll find that these uh, collect oil because the air box serves more than just one function of cleaning the air. It also collects the um, blow-by vapors from the engine. You know, the, you pretty much, you do not vent the, the the vapors, you know, the crankcase vapors to the atmosphere, they're kind of a, a pollutant. So you burn them back off in the engine and that's the whole idea of how this works. So we're gonna go ahead and put the gasket in. Pretty straightforward. And you can use some solvent, clean out the whole inside of the, the air box. Uh, pretty straightforward. But the gasket, it's kind of like a foam rubber and you pretty much just 
push it all the way around this uh, groove here. Don't need grease or anything to hold it. Might use a little flat bladed screwdriver to help um, guide it in place. And towards the end, you gotta kinda stretch it a little bit. And say it pops out, maybe you need to stretch it a little bit more as you're installing it. So, may have to work at it a little bit, get it all in place, but. And if it's really stubborn, you can stretch it more and more to kind of give it a little bit more length. And if you stretch it too much, you end up with too much length and then you kind of got to redo it. It's kind of takes a little bit of work. To be honest with you, I haven't done one in a while. Uh, the techs probably do it all the time because they're doing the service for me on the, all the scooters here. Um, back to the air filter. I could clean this thing. It's not rotting like that little belt case air filter in the previous episode. Um, these air filters are just incredibly cheap. It's what I recommend. It's just buying a whole new air filter. Buy the premium one. Um, there is some Melosi ones that breathe a little bit better. I've talked about air filters in the past in some other videos. 831-9970P, uh, and that's a premium air filter. And the best thing about it, it's the reason it's called premium, it's already uh, pre-oiled. It's like ready to install. So you have the air box all cleaned out. Pop that back in, make sure this side's all clean. Uh, we can blow it out or you can just wipe it out with a rag. Um, if it's really dirty, you could even take it in a sink. You just use mild dish soap to, to get the grease and build up out of it. Same with this rubber hose. Make sure that this rubber hose doesn't have any splits. It's definitely getting a little hard, but it's still serviceable. I mean, if you have splits in it, you're going to have air leaks that, um, where dirt can get into your intake track and uh, foul up the, in, the, the throttle body and uh, wear your motor out a little quicker. So the air, uh, Filter lid just goes on like such. It's got the brand new gasket in there. And you kind of get nice when everything's all apart. And what I like to do is just hold it, take the first screw right there, and usually I start with the center one and we'll get that one started. So make sure you don't cut new threads. They are going into plastic. And I usually tighten that one. Then I'll move over to this one right here. The way you know that you're not cutting new threads is you back, back the screw, die, screw off and then start turning it and we'll start to cut right in. Then just move on to all the other screws. Obviously you got those special ones on the top. And some very inexpensive parts and the air filters all completely serviced and uh, you know it's not gonna be leaking oil out of the air box so pretty uh, pretty inexpensive little repairs to do and super simple to do if the motor's out a couple more screws and you kind of sometimes the the screwdriver tip is magnetized it makes it much easier so you're not you can kind of see the screws sitting there and i can feel my way around make sure i catch the um the hole, so. All right, so we're all set. All the screws are in there. Now the air box can go on. Uh, what do you think about this hose? Does it look perfect? Uh, looks like a 10 year old hose that's splitting. So we'll just go ahead and pull that off. We can get rid of that hose. I can go ahead and replace that hose. Uh, a couple things I have. I have the replacement hose, original Piaggio 844094, and it's just a replacement hose. Sometimes they're a little bit too long. And the other thing I have to make installation a little easier than those one-time use clamps is I have the, the small high quality worm gear hose clamps, and that's HCL6 Mini is what we have on the Scooter West web store. So I have my air box ready to install in one hand and I got three screws that hold the air box to the engine in the other. As you can see, one's longer and dark. 
Uh, they have two washers each. One's like a star style locking washer and a flat washer. So they're all set up just the way they came off. Uh, Airbox just sets right in place. Make sure nothing's trapped in the way. Um, and I'll go ahead and get the screws all started. They're actually a little tricky sometimes. So I got the shorter screws and you want to go all the way through. And the nice thing when everything's off, you can move, you got to move this rear fender because the screw not only uh, holds this air box in place, it holds the rear fender that's above the, uh, the rear tire. So sometimes they're pretty hard to get started because it's got to go through the engine case and catch a, a fastener, you know, a threaded um, speed nut that's on the backside. So, you know, sometimes they're a little bit of work, get it all the way through, make sure it catches the nut, doesn't cross thread. And I would not tighten this all the way, just get it started. Move on to the next one. Pretty much same, same things going on right here. And then that long one is gonna be the easier one. And you could kind of move things all around to get everything to kind of line up. There we go. You can kind of feel it drop right into place. So that one's in there and threading. And then the long one right in the front here. So uh, some of the older motors, you actually had a nut on the backside. Uh, these newer motors, they thread right in, so no problem here. Get on the other side. So I may need to wiggle things around. And I'm doing all this before I put the breather hose back on because sometimes you may need to cut that breather hose to length. So one thing about the air box being installed before I put the motor in, I kind of pulled a robot here. Uh, one thing, um, the rear shock will go in here and you got to lift the air box out of the way to put the shock bolt through. But I want to get this breather hose all uh, set up. Uh, when you buy the brand new 844094 breather hose, they typically are too long because they're kind of just for other applications. So you can see originally it was about that length there. So um, what I'll do is I'll install the one length. I'm using one of these HCL minis. I'll put it onto the air box since the air box is all bolted in place. Um, drop that right on there. Go ahead and tighten that. And we'll be okay. We're not gonna pull the air box all the way off, but I will probably loosen the bolts before I get the shocks uh, rein reinstalled. And I have that little rubber cap to protect that. Um, and typically the, the best way to probably set up the length is just go ahead and look to see. Give it a little bit of curve because you want you don't want to have it tight. And, and I'm kind of just looking about like such. So right about there. And you can just use a really sharp knife, cut through this hose. There's no uh, fibers or anything in it. Pretty straightforward to cut. And we got our uh, new hose clamp. Nice thing about these hose clamps, they are reusable. So if it comes time where you got to service the valve cover, um, no problems at all. So put the hose clamp on there and then push this right onto the barb of the, this bubble right here. Tighten our hose clamp. You don't need to tighten it too tight, just enough to hold the hose in place. Uh, over tightening these, you know, it actually does, it ends up uh, cutting the hose. It's not a good thing, so. All right. So at this point we'll loosen the air box, uh, jack up the scooter and shove the motor in. So just like when I remove the motor, I have the jack in the center. I have the front tire clamp, whether it's on a lift like this or one of my prior videos, I show how to make a wooden, uh, you know, front scooter hoist that kind of holds it in place. You got to do something or you're you going to need a lot of people to help you and hold the frame. And it's going to be very cumbersome um, to pull the motor out. So uh, one thing is the wheels kind of loose, so make sure it stays on the splines. So we'll go ahead and we have the, the motor pretty much jacked up enough. You could remove the rear fender, makes it a little bit easier, but it's just, we'll make sure we avoid all these parts. Um, you may need to go a little higher. You have the shocks in place. Um, you could even put the shocks on the engine, uh, different ways to do it, but the jacks, they go pretty high. You could lift the scooter very, very high and get all the clearance you need. And while it's on the center stand, you just kind of steer the motor around. And I'm kind of lifting, making sure the wheel don't fall off. 
we're getting pretty close at this point. Um, one thing is it's also easier if you have the, the exhaust manifold out of the way. So go ahead and pull that back off. And at this point, we'll just start moving the engine forward and dropping our jack. And I have the air box loose again because the shocks are going to want to go in place. So we drop the frame down and we kind of move the scooter engine forward a little bit. Uh, the one thing, the shocks do move around. So that's going to help you out. And you're going to need to continue to kind of guide things in place, keeping the shocks out of the way of the air box. And make sure nothing in here, I have everything tied off to the size of wiring. Last thing you want is that stuff getting um, trapped. So just continue lowering the, the scooter frame. We're getting very close at this point, probably within an inch. And at this point, we're gonna go ahead and get things to line up. So you just pretty much need to sight everything. It's not gonna be perfect. Again, kind of monitor all your wires, your cables, make sure nothing's gonna be pinched in between the fuel tank and the engine frame. We'll come back to that and get those all hooked up a little later. We're very close. So we have the spacer, we have the long bolt for the engine. And we're kind of, you just gotta maneuver things around. So you get this side lined up and it may not be lined up on the other side, but we're very close on this side. Put the bolt through. And before it pops through the other side of the bushing, we're gonna need to get the spacer in place. And that goes between this right side bushing and the engine subframe. So you have the spacer back there. And you'll get it right in place and things will start to line up. And you got several layers in this back now going into the swing arm and it's hitting. You'll kind of feel that it's not quite lined up. So you may need to steer the whole motor. And then we'll sight the bolt on the other side and make some minor adjustments to the motor. So go ahead and sight the bolt. You may need to make adjustments to your position of your jack and the engine. And it obviously helps if you have two people. Oh, can't see what I'm doing, so I... Uh, go. Yeah, if I do. There we go. Okay, now it should do it. Okay. Rolling? Yeah, yeah. So you're going to need to make minor adjustments as you go to get the bolt all the way through. And once it pops all the way through, you have a single 10 millimeter nylon locking nut. Go ahead and thread that on. You can put a, a wrench on the, the bolt and tighten that up. So I got the engine bolt through. I have a combination wrench on one side. Of course, this is always a lot easier to do if you have a helper with a 17 millimeter socket. I'm gonna flop over to the other side and torque the main engine bolt here. And if you're wondering about how much to torque this to, it's gonna be around 40 foot pounds. Don't wanna to over torque it or use like an electric impact and get too crazy on it, break the bolt. So also important is make sure none of your cables or hoses are pinched when you have the motor back up into the frame here. So um, pretty much the only thing we have holding the motor right now is that engine mount. The next step is we're gonna go ahead and connect the shock and we'll work from the, the, the left side here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these spacers in to the shock. They only go on to the left side and I'll he-man the 
the motor up into place. And of course you could, I could just lower the jack, do this as well, but I like to make it difficult for myself sometimes. So. There you go. It's so got the bolt through. It's a combination of using a 13 millimeter socket or combination wrench. And we'll go ahead and hold the nut with our 17 millimeter combo here. And again, those nylock locking nuts, if they've been removed too many times, it'd probably be just a wise idea to go ahead and replace them. I'm gonna go ahead and sit the air box back in. I kind of showed the steps of putting the screws on the air box, but I kind of jumped the gun. So next we're gonna get our brake caliper in place. And of course, this is a perfect time. If it's necessary, we'll go ahead and change the brake pads. So I'll pull them out, show you how the brake pads look. So I got the caliper here. There's a little pin right here, a little clevis pin. You just could pull it out. Probably better to do it with a needle nose, but I got my screwdriver here. Sometimes you gotta position it around to get it where you could get it out. Pull the pin out, then we'll go ahead and pull the main pin out. So a lot, a lot of times you wanna just push the pads so you may need to pull this pin out with a set of pliers here. And keep in mind this little clip pops out. Even if we put the pads back in, you want to put a little bend on that clip. Let's pop the pads out and look at them in detail. Um, you may think they're pretty thick, but you look for the thinnest spot on the brake pad. And right here, I would say that's just a tiny bit over a millimeter. So it'd be just a good idea to replace them. The problem with brake pads, they don't really wear even. So you look at certain parts of this brake pad, you can see it's about two millimeters right there. So just best to start with a brand new set of brake pads. Uh, we gotta get those pistons back in. Sometimes you can do it with your fingers, you know, push the pistons in. Another option is to put the old pads in. Make sure your brake reservoirs aren't too high. You can put the pads just in backwards and get a big flat screwdriver and pry the, the calipers open. So you got your old pads here and you just get a big screwdriver and just twist and that will push your pistons all the way back in. And if they're not pushing all the way back in, it's probably because your brake fluid level is too high. Uh, you could clean this a little bit. I would just suggest a brand new set of factory brake pads. It comes with a new anti-squeal um, clip. The Scooter West part number is BP050-PA. Uh, pretty inexpensive. We do have other options available for brake pads, but the factory ones seem to be adequate. They work just fine. Let's go ahead and put the pads in. Obviously the pads face the disc. And they're both the same, so you just put them in either way. There's no direction to them. Um, these brakes on GTSs are kind of notorious for squealing when they're cold. Had a lot of customers complain of that over the years. Uh, we'll take our anti-squeal clip. You put a little more bend on it and that's how you can make it not squeal quite as much. And we'll go ahead and put the pin through. I'll zoom back with an anti-squeal clip here. And the idea is this pin has some friction against this anti-squeal clip. So you may have to um, tap it through. And that's good, because if there's friction on that anti-squeal clip, it's gonna do its job. If it just, if the pin just goes through with no resistance, uh, it's typically not gonna put enough tension on the brake pads. So they're gonna wanna um, make a little bit of a squeal when they're cold. So put the clip back in. And at this point, you can go ahead and pull the bolts out. They got the, the wave washers and a flat washer. And we'll just go ahead and set the caliper back onto the rotor here. Uh, if you want the brakes to seat a little quicker, you could sand the rotor. Um, there's not really an issue with this rotor. There's no oils or residue on it. If there's any oil residue, it may be just worth replacing it. Uh, there's also a minimum measurement for the thickness of this rotor. Just running my fingers over it, I don't feel much of a, 
you know, the grooving in the, the rotor, they typically last quite a long time, especially on the rear, because they don't run a, a metallic centered brake pad, so not really an issue. And you just want to use a six millimeter Allen key, and we'll go ahead and dry those uh, back into place. And at this point, I can pull the brake a couple times, make sure it tightens right up. And if you want to torque these, about 16 foot pounds, but with a quarter inch drive, just kind of go pretty tight and you'll be fine. Um, this hose here has a couple clips and just like when we removed it, we'll put everything back in the exact same spot. Uh, camera's not on this side, but you get the idea. When I took it apart, you can see how all this was put together on one of the earlier videos. Uh, some of my older videos kind of show, outline how this is all laid out. So go ahead and get the three screws that hold the air box in place. Of course, the longer one goes towards the front. And I don't even have this side skirt off, but it is possible to tighten the screw without taking this, this side skirt off. That's why these little vent holes are here. So you can get access to a screw. You get a little better access with this. Well, I have quite a bit of light up from top so I could see what I'm doing here. Obviously the camera's not getting what I'm tightening, but you know, originally I put this bolt in when I had the motor out, so you can kind of get the idea. So at this point, we could put the wheel back on. I got a brand new tire. It's all been balanced. Uh, we were able to clean the rim up. It looks almost new. Chrome's all really nice. Um, so go ahead and slip the wheel right in there. It's got a brand new tire stem. Uh, keep in mind the spacer's in there. That's pretty important that the spacer is in place. Uh, take your your five wheel bolts, get them all started. And several ways, once they're started, you could cheat and use a power tool to kind of get them uh, all the way in, or you could use a T-handle, you could use a little small ratchet and spin it. I always like just working whatever I can do to speed up a job, do it efficiently, but not do something stupid like put the bolts in a impact and just go to town with them because if you cross thread, then uh, you're gonna be backpedaling quite a bit to repair the thread. So, you know, as fun as it is to use power tools, um, sometimes I just prefer to use the hand tools and use them efficiently. So, you can just quickly speed up the job. So, so at this point, they're all seated. Uh, you do kind of a star pattern and it would be about 16 foot pounds, which is pretty tight with a quarter inch drive. Uh, Ratchet, just make sure your Allen's all the way in there. You don't want to be stripping your, your wheel bolts out. And we're all safe at this point. Next, we'll get the swing arm on. You want to check this bearing. It feels really smooth, remarkably smooth. There's no free play in it. It's really, really smooth. Another tip is to put a little grease on this shaft. So next time you got to take it apart, you're not going to have an issue with it getting seized up. And alternative to the grease is anti seize compounds is silver. It's kind of like a silver grease. Um, probably a little bit more I needed, but that's uh, not really going to go away. You can put it on the threads. You can put it on anything where the metal is, you know, like a bolt goes through, especially if you're in a climate where the roads are wet or salted. Um, you might as well do all the preventive maintenance you can. So the next time around, when you take it apart, uh, everything comes apart real nice and um, easy. You're not fighting every single bolt, breaking bolts and so on. So you got the two pairs of uh, Allen screws. They look real similar to the wheel bolts. The way you can tell they're a little different is the washer's actually a little smaller versus the wheel bolts have a larger washer. Go and get those in. And again, about 16 foot pounds. If you over torque these or don't do them right, they could crack in the engine case. I've had to repair that in the past for customers, extract a broken bolt. And 16 foot pounds here. And there, then the shock, you just kind of muscle it right onto this, the shaft. Sometimes you gotta lift the motor a little bit. Sometimes it's just best to go ahead and drop the engine. And if you drop the engine, My center jack now at this point, you don't have to fight quite as much because it's right at the same level. So 
got the large washer and the nylon uh, locking nut here. So uh, 17 millimeter socket, about 30 foot pounds. And the last one is your, your wheel bolt here. So we put the small spacer. This wheel bolt's really in good shape. Um, if it's kind of like, if it's ever, ever come loose, it's just worth replacing this uh, because at that point it's kind of mushroomed and, and warped a little bit. And you're gonna take a 24 millimeter socket here. And with the wheel down, it is possible, you gotta torque this to about 80 foot pounds. Let me just show you. You're probably gonna have the tire slip. You could use your clutch locking tool when you're putting together a transmission. But a lot of times when you put pressure down with a brand new tire against the surface, that's enough friction. So we're gonna get a torque wrench on this one. This is about 80 foot pounds. There we go. So that's torque to the spec. So pretty important to put this uh, locking castle onto the nut right there. And then you're gonna need a cotter pin. This, the original Piaggio part number, Scooter West part number is 012789C, I think it is. So you pop that pin in, gotta give it a couple hits. Uh, the best way to twirl these things is just use a very large set of diagonal pliers. So kind of give it the twirl around and you could use the diagonal pliers to kind of tuck it right up against the cap right there. So that's kind of a nice way to do it. You don't want to have it snag anything. Um, pretty straightforward to do. Um, before we get too far, there's a couple things I do want to check. I don't have the oil filter on. Probably should have spun an oil filter on before I got too far with uh, the assembly. So you got the 24 millimeter socket, make sure that your oil drain is tight. Doesn't need to be too tight, um, even though it's a large diameter. Then we'll take a brand new oil filter. And you know, these nicer oil filters usually have a little plastic and the O-ring's already lubricated. Obviously no O-ring left behind, it's very clean. And spin that oil filter on. And then we'll use the T-handle and typically you tighten another quarter turn. So go ahead and do that. Sometimes you do a little bit more, about a half turn. And pretty much when this thing's camming out, that's about as tight as you wanna go. Um, and they're very tight, so we're good. Uh, next, we'll go ahead and put the header in before we connect up the hoses here. So you got the O2 sensor connector on there. Um, kind of uh, get the header. There's also this little rubber clip right here that goes on to the, this pole, post right here off the engine that keeps the wire out of the, you know, the hot header. It's really important if you put all these things the way they came from the factory, there's a reason they kind of have it set up the way they do. Um, they have made some improvements to the routing of the wiring over the years. And for the most part, these ones were pretty set up Go ahead and put the brand new uh, nuts up onto the, the, the two exhaust studs. And you just gotta feel your way around. It's not, if you're doing it the first time, it's not exactly easy, but you can kind of feel, get the, them started. And we're gonna leave this header pretty loose because we'll get the muffler on and get everything all positioned right. It's pretty critical that you have everything positioned, you have no strain on any of the exhaust system components because that's how you end up cracking a header or cracking your exhaust mount or having other issues, breaking a stud. Um, it's, it's all on the installation of how this is all set up. So I got those, you know, the header moves a little bit right now, so that's good. Um, the exhaust muffler we did a little restoration to it. Went ahead and put the new barbecue paint. You can see my other video on how to clean up your stock exhaust. I do like this stock exhaust. They do tend to last a long time. This muffler graphite bushing is in really nice shape. They do say in the factory book to replace these every time you have this apart, um, but it's still in really, really good shape. So we're gonna leave that alone. I'm gonna pull this bolt out and that same anti-seize compound. It looks like a silver grease. We'll go ahead and put a little coat on this 
And that just keeps this bolt from seizing up next time we got to take it off. And you see the clamp, I didn't take the clamp all the way off. So the header's loose, that's good. And we'll go ahead and kind of get everything situated. Get that graphite bushing over the, the header and we'll aim, get this all lined up. So pretty much you get these all to line up, have your fasteners ready. They have kind of a star washer and a flat washer. You need a T40 Torx driver. I tend to just want to start with that one. So now I can let go of the, the, the exhaust system here. Let's get them all started. And we'll get our T40 uh, driver and get these all torqued to place. So I have a T40 Torx driver for tightening the three fasteners. And then I have kind of a specialty tool. Um, this is a wobble that's 11 uh, millimeters. Pretty difficult to find. It's available from Snap-on. Um, it's actually got a 10 millimeter head, but it's a little deep. It's got a deep kind of um, versus the standard ones that are pretty shallow. So I'm gonna go up there and just snug both the header header joints just a little bit. And if you really want to get picky on it, you can torque these to the final torque of about 11 foot pounds. But I just have those snug. And at this point, I have these all pretty close to where they need to go. About 16 foot pounds for all three of these fasteners here. And I suggested getting them all seated first, pretty much where they stop, and then do the final torque. And we'll go ahead and do the final torque of those header joints. We're gonna have a 17 millimeter socket for that exhaust clamp. And about 11 foot pounds on each one of these header, header joints here. You can't see what I'm doing. All right, so kind of one last thing while we're here, we clean up this barb here. The inside of this hose is fairly clean. Pretty important, or if the hose is just in really bad shape, it might be worth replacing it. Just to show you, there is a little bit of rub through on this hose here, you know, but it's, it still is uh, pretty intact. That's a, kind of a side effect of some of the crash bars. They'll rub through this hose here. We'll take a, HCL 12 soft, that's the Scooter West part number. It's a, a really high quality German made uh, hose clamp. It doesn't bite into the hose or damage the hose. Uh, we'll go ahead and put that on there. And this, you need to seat the hose all the way. And you just wiggle it all the way on until it's right to that, um, stops right at that little flange right there. Take a uh, flat bladed screwdriver. We'll go ahead and tighten the clamp. And we're pretty much, you know, short of putting the crash bars on and the side skirt, we're pretty much, we got everything we need to do on the right side of the scooter. We're gonna drop the scooter and start making connections underneath and we'll fill the fluids and get the scooter started. And that will pretty much sum up this video. Um, and we'll do the last video kind of cosmetically clean the scooter all up. So last thing, we have the spark plug cap. You wanna make sure it fits really good. You wanna make sure this rubber seal is really nice. You could also put a little bit of dielectric grease on it. And of course, you kinda of gotta make sure it's all routed correctly. Um, this might be best. We'll probably pop it up towards the plug. And when we're at the top, we'll go ahead and snap it onto the spark plug. So at this point, we still have the throttle body tied to the side. I have the coolant hose underneath this breather hose. Um, you kind of got a lot of things you got to keep track of, um, but we'll just start connecting it one by one, kind of in a good logical order. Um, and it's pretty important, all the routing. I see so many people route the fuel line wrong or get the wiring all wrong and you end up with, you shorten the life of the whole wiring harness. So I'm going to continue back on my spark plug cap not exactly the easiest thing. I'll cheat with a set of needle nose there. Get it right onto the spark plug. You want to make sure the spark plug cap snaps on. These nice, nice thing about these 2011 and later, they do have an extra clamp that's built into the head. 
it keeps the spark plug cap from popping off like all the prior models. You know, the earlier models, the caps would pop off and when you had that problem, you just have to get a new cap. But these ones, you can even have a worn out cap and it will still stay in place because they got that integral clamp that holds the cap in place. So kind of get that in place. Sometimes you can lever against the frame, pop it on, it made a nice snap. So that's a good thing. The ones with the clamps rarely have issues. So we got the cap all back in place. Um, Next, we'll start concentrating on some of the cables and hoses on the left side of the scooter. So there's a clamp that's for this coolant hose. Go ahead and get that in place. It's at the very top of the belt cover. You can see earlier in, on in the video, when I have the motor out, you can see this clamp. And you wanna get the hose in it. And before you even clamp it closed, you wanna make sure the position of the hose is right. So it's gonna go right onto the this barb here. So it's good there. Um, before we forget it, there's a ground wire that comes up and we'll find that wire and it's right here. And we'll go ahead and connect that to the frame, the single um, six millimeter fastener. Just use a 10 millimeter socket. Uh, make sure this is tight because if it's not tight, it's not going to do its job. And now we'll work on some of these hoses here. I'll get this coolant hose out of the way for the moment. I put a rubber cap on this barb here. This is the evaporative emissions barb right there. And typically it's just easier if you use a standard small hose clamp. Uh, the Scooter West part number is HCL4 Mini. And this hose is still in really nice shape. Sometimes uh, the hoses on an older GTS, it might be worth replacing some of these hoses. Um, I did that video on where you can find a hidden air leak on your GTS that could be causing idle problems um, maybe about nine months ago or a year ago. And that's a, definitely a hose you want to check. It's quite buried in the frame of the scooter. So we'll go ahead and get this in place. And alternatively, you could make the job a little easier, you use a quarter inch uh, socket instead of a flat blade screwdriver. And one little air, I just want to show you one air. You want to make sure you have some of the hose exposed when you're using one of these clamps. So there's just a little bit of hose exposed. Now we can tighten the clamp down. And I'm kind of holding the clamp because it kind of wants to turn the whole clamp. So that's all we need to do, just enough to hold in place. Next, we'll move on to this coolant hose. Again, we'll use a HCL soft, or HCL 12 soft. This is a nice quality hose clamp that you can reuse. On later GTSs, they went to this style clamp instead of the one-time use. Kind of hold it in place. We're gonna just put it right over where the existing clamp was. Next, we'll go ahead and start routing some of our wiring and the clamp for the throttle body, you know, put the throttle body back in place. So I'm putting that clamp back in there. I have the single zip tie kind of holding this whole thing to the frame of the scooter. We'll go ahead and cut that and drop the throttle body. So pretty important not to have everything getting twisted up as we're doing this job. You know, everything is so you got the throttle body. We don't have any electrical connections on it, just the throttle connect uh, cable connections. Um, we have our fuel line, which is going to be our next step. And it, the way it goes is we'll go ahead and pull this little, and you just snap it right in place. And you can see the line goes underneath the throttle body. So that's the correct spot for where it goes. So it will be nested kind of underneath the throttle body. Um, one thing I did mix up is I do want to get this wiring harness underneath the fuel line there. So you can see there's a clamp right here that holds this wiring harness in place. And there's one extra wire that's going to go down and it's where that goes is to your O2 sensor. So you may want to get that untwisted. 
these red tapes are the areas where it would have gone in, it goes into the hose, you know, the, not the hose clamps, the wiring um, clamp. So go ahead and get this connector in place. Only go in one direction. If you have any difficulty, you could always un unclamp. There's enough uh, space to do that even from the bottom. So it clicks in place. You always want to hear a click and give the, the connector a, a little tug. Make sure it's in place. Go ahead and start getting some of these wiring routed here. So this one, we have this wire is going to go on this direction. And we're going to go ahead and start getting these into the clamp right here. So uh, you see this red wire right here? For this red tape, all these, including this main harness, go underneath this clamp that's right on top of the engine. So we got that in place. We'll come back to that. And we have this lower clamp that will go ahead and get the wiring in place. Including the O2 sensor wire. So I know it's pretty hard because my hands are all in, in place. Like I said, if you're taking yours apart, take a lot of notes, take photos, so you know exactly how all this stuff goes. Um, one more little thing I like to do, this was the way they were done from the originally, is you have this O2 sensor wire and it was originally zip tied to this small coolant bypass hose. Uh, a lot of people just cut that the first time they change a tire and it never tends to go back into place so and it's a good thing because sometimes that wire will for the O2 sensor will get torn and it kind of makes a mess of everything in here so you know it could so I'm fishing the the hose clamp or the the zip tie through go ahead and feed that through takes a little bit of dexterity to get that all uh, fish through there and we'll go ahead and tighten it. Don't tighten it so much that it collapses the hose. Then you could just go ahead and cut that excess zip tie. Now we're pretty close to getting our throttle body in. So you want to flop the throttle body around and maybe a perfect time to clean this. And you can just use standard carburetor cleaner and some rags. So you just spray it, spray it off. I mean, with the blade closed, it's not, not much is gonna come through. But you can use a rag and just kind of wipe the inside of the throttle body, kind of clean off that residue. It's mostly the blow by oil and it'll look pretty clean. It's not too critical. I don't find it affects the operation too much. I mean, Sometimes I know cars get heavily affected by having dirty throttle bodies, but these, you know, it's just a little bit of oil residue and you can repeat the same steps with this side. Clean the outside of it. Probably don't want to spray the whole entire thing down, but once you get it fairly clean, it's pretty much ready to go back into place. So, so you got the hose clamps on the intake Manifold, also that rubber boot that goes to the, the air box. And as the scooters get hold, older, these rubber boots tend to get a little, little harder. So you sometimes have to fight everything. So I tend to like to get one into the air filter side first and then work the intake manifold on the other one here. So. And then we have the pair of hose clamps. Make sure they're all the way around on the groove. And it really doesn't matter if, if the clamps on this side are the left or the right. And everything's in there tight, so it pushed all the way in. Uh, we have our hose that will go ahead and tighten down. 
But first of all, we gotta get some of these connections plugged in. So you got your ECU, it's a, a big multi-pin connector. Make sure it clicks. Uh, you wanna have a Phillips uh, screwdriver to tighten the clamp that holds both the fuel line and that main connector in place. So put the screw just back in place there. So you have this and then the fuel line that kind of goes right on top. You have the two remaining connectors and you can see I made some marks where the zip ties would go. Um, so we'll put the, o, the, not the O2 sensor connector, but the um, fuel injector connector back in place. And then this is your engine temperature sensor. It kind of routes around, goes past this thermostat housing, and we'll make the connection right here. And sometimes you gotta make sure this, this connector has a tendency to have moisture in it, it will cause some abnormal running and the fan coming on when it shouldn't. So make sure there's no moisture in the connector. So at this point, we start taking some zip ties and securing our, some of the cabling and hoses here. So we got another zip tie right here. And if you remember on several videos ago, I made some silver marks where the zip ties go, just to remind myself how they all are routed and we have several other wiring, you know, much more wiring. We have the grommets for your, your, your throttle cables. They go in this little clamp right here. And I had a little rubber tube that was part of the, the clamp that went, or the zip tie that went around these hoses here. So just keep that in mind that, go ahead and put that the same way they had it originally from the factory. So have that little piece of vinyl hose on there. And some of the last wiring we have, we have uh, this wire just kind of nest right here and it's gonna plug right into this relay. There's gonna be another zip tie that's gonna hold it in place right there. Along with this, the rest of the main wiring, wiring harness, they do have this nice little clamp here. I mean, you got some of the other stuff you could send the the wiring right through here. And then we're gonna go ahead and make this, uh, the main connections for the crank sensor and also the stator or the alternator of the scooter. Let's go ahead and lift this thing up. Take the screw out, kind of makes the job a little easier. You can see we have a couple things remaining over here. You got the starter wire. We got one more ground. So we'll have a eight millimeter fastener at the, the starter motor for that last ground. There's gonna be one more zip tie that holds all those wires to that intake boot. And we're pretty much, you know, once those last two connections are made, once the motor has fluids, it should start right up. So two more zip ties remaining that we'll need you need to have a, a fairly long zip tie and it goes, you do not want to go around your um, throttle cables, but you go around this boot here and you can secure all these cables to the top of the motor here. Or the top of this rubber boot, essentially. And you can even see I made a gray mark for those when I disassembled the motor here, or pulled the motor out of the frame. The best way to make all these connections right here is to pull this bracket up. And the reason being is I wanna get these uh, connectors back in these clamps, and it's really hard to do when the bracket's in place. So these just slide right in there. Go ahead and make the connection. Very important, that snaps and a large power connector. And pretty much 2011 and later, all this stuff has improved quite a bit. So this has got the improved higher power uh, connections that have less, less troubles. They don't tend to melt like some of the earlier ones. 
and we'll get that screw lined up. And one last zip tie that we'll set in place. And that was around these two wiring looms right here. So, and that's pretty much the way it was all set up from the factory. The only way I can tell it's really different is I use different style hose clamps for And this little clamp just goes like that, the little. And you got this one screw, you got this little beauty cover right here, and it just engages in that little slot right there. And you just put the single screw in there. Kind of just cleans up the look of the underside of the engine bay here. And at this point, we're gonna put oil and coolant in, this, in the scooter and see if it starts right up. So the way we fill the oil in a workshop is much more efficiently than using bottles of oil. I have 55 gallon drums of oil, uh, 5W40 synthetic. I have a calibrated uh, meter and a pneumatic pump that will pump the oil in. So just to show you how quickly this happens, we're gonna put uh, 1.2 liters in this, for 1.25 liters. So it just pretty much meters the oil right into the engine here. And there you go. So that should be the correct amount, especially with a fully drained motor. We'll double check it, of course, after we run the motor, but we know we have a full crankcase of engine oil. Also want to check your, your gearbox oil, make sure that's at the correct level. If not, change it. I've already looked at it, it looks really clean. All right, in the past, I've showed several times how to change your own coolant. In a workshop, we do it a little differently. We have a pneumatic uh, system that puts a vacuum on the whole entire coolant system with this rubber cap. Um, it's got a gauge on it, shows a vacuum. And pretty much the way it works is we'll put a vacuum on the system and then it just starts pulling the coolant right into the, you see the hose, there's a return line. And I'll kind of watch, you know, where, where it's at. You let it pull a vacuum, a hard vacuum on the system. And that pulls any air out of the line. So it does a pretty remarkable job. It's a lot easier than doing it with the traditional ways of bleeding. And I'll kind of watch it right here, you know, right when it's at the correct level. We'll go ahead and shut the, the bleeder off. And we're pretty much right there. And I even overfilled it a little bit. Well, that's why I got these big syringes here. And you never want to run the uh, coolant system overfilled because the problem you'll run into is it will, you'll end up with a lap full of coolant when the coolant expands and it gets hot. So right at the high mark, leave that coolant cap off. And I think we're safe to start the scooter. Well, let's see what happens here. Here, the fuel pump priming. It might take a little bit to start. And our oil pressure light's going off. That's pretty important. And it's idling just fine. So, at this point, I'm gonna allow it the heat cycle, make sure there's no coolant drips. Uh, sometimes you may need to top off the coolant a little bit more. We'll make sure the radiator's getting hot, just like we would with a normal coolant flush. Um, and probably take the scooter on a test ride. So we've allowed it to idle for a while and the coolant lines are starting to get all warm. I checked the bleeder and pure coolant comes out of the bleeder. There's no air in the system especially when you uh, vacuum flush the system with the professional tools like I did. Uh, it's right at the maximum mark, so I think at this point we're probably safe to leave the cap on. And typically I'd let it do a whole entire heat cycle. I'll let the fan come on, make sure both radiators are getting warm. Um, and then once it fan cycles, I'll take it on a test ride. 
And I can tell you, this motor is really quiet now. I don't hear uh, the exhaust leak. I do no longer hear all that whirling noises from that uh, faulty water pump. And we've started fresh. It's got all new fluids in it. Transmission's been cleaned up in service, valves are checked, and so on. So I think we got a really nice running GTV. It may be about 10 years old, but I think it's got tons of life still left in it. Um, I'm happy for whoever ends up buying the scooter. We'll have it up for sale at Vespa Motorsport here in San Diego soon. Um, if you're watching this video probably a few weeks after it's posted, I'm sure the scooter's going to be gone. Um, our used inventory turns over very rapidly here in San Diego. But thanks for watching. I thought you'd find that pretty interesting. There's going to be one more video after this one. I'm going to detail the whole scooter. I've already started. You know, like the rear rims all cleaned. I cleaned up the racks. They all had a lot of corrosion. Uh, some of these front parts need to be clean and we're going to wash it really nice and probably wax the paint. I already popped a little dent out when I had the engine out. And so it needs a little touch up. It's probably the best we're going to do with it. Not going to repaint the whole scooter just over that little blemish there. Uh, I'll probably joyride this thing for a, a week or so, just riding it home and back to the shop. Give it a good shakedown, as I like to say. You know, you do major work at a workshop. I usually tell my technicians, go out on a 10 mile ride. Maybe go out on a 25 mile ride, just to really shake it down. Last thing I want to do is return a scooter and it has a coolant leak or something. You know, sometimes you have stuff arise after doing major services or major repair work on an engine. Until next time, it's Robot here from, from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. Again, if you're looking for any of the parts, accessories, specialized tools to service your Vespa to this level, check out ScooterWest.com. See you on the next one. Thanks for subscribing.